John here again. So I got this 2008 Ford Focus, and the person that owns it dropped it off and said there's a, a antifreeze leak, a coolant leak, and he thinks it's the bottom radiator hose. I asked him why. He said that's the area it's coming from. So I looked at the bottom radiator hose. It's not the bottom radiator hose. It's dry as a bone. There is OEM clamps on it, original clamps, you know, the, the kind you squeeze together. Uh, sometimes they crack and it will leak, but or just let stuff escape sometimes they don't even leak but it wasn't that I checked everything out down there and I just ran it for about a half hour I can't get it to leak I guess uh, if we went down a road and got some heat involved uh, so I'm just gonna put some pressure under it because um, it's not doing it on, it on its own I felt the heater hose which I was a little concerned with that because this is one of those heater hoses that starts over here and snakes around and tees off and ends up in East Kentucky so I hope it ain't that uh, but it is not the upper or lower radiator hose, and the upper radiator hose is dry as well. So we've got to figure this out. It's leaking somewhere because he said there's a puddle. Even a guy at Napa agreed it was a bottom bottom radiator hose. <laughs> I'm thinking it's not, though. We'll find out what it is, though. Okay, so this um, ra uh, reservoir was empty. I, put, I filled it up to uh, where it's supposed to be. But I think the best way to, to figure this out is uh, hopefully i got a cap that uh, just ran this engine. There was no leaks visible yet um, and it's up to temperature like I said the heater hose down there is hot you know I'm, I'm running the heater inside everything's got heat and the, the hose is hot the bottom radiator hose was cold to the touch and uh, the upper one had some heat in there I'm not sure if the thermostat opened or, or what's going on there but I think I got a cap that fits this uh, and we'll just pressurize it this will be the quickest way to go if there's any leaks it'll find it Let's see, 18.5, I gotta get a light here, is the black zone here. So we're gonna do uh, between 17 and 19. We'll pump her up to there, which is, that's kind of a lot. <laughs> uh, the only one higher is 20. Uh, but anyways, we'll pressurize it. Does this say Ford? Is this the right cap? <laughs> uh, if, if, if it doesn't say on the cap, you gotta you find out what your PSI is because you don't wanna overdo it. You know, cook something you didn't need to. Um, so we'll, we'll pressurize this and uh, find out where to leave it. So let me hook it up and, and go from there. So let's, uh, let's get her up to um, 18, which is weird. You're usually around, uh, I don't know, 5 to 7, maybe 10. That's kind of a lot of pressure there. Nah, when we get close, if we don't hear anything, we should hear a leak though, something peeing out. I'll be quiet here in a second. We're uh, you hear something dripping already. We're, we're only at 14. Let me go up a little more. Yeah, I hear something dripping. Let me get the camera off the tripod and get a light. Something's dripping somewhere. It's leaking pretty good. Oh, look at there. Look at there. Can you see that? I'm just bending this hose a little bit. It's peeing right out. Let me, oh, see it there? So it's right up, right under this bend. It's peeing out pretty good. Yep, and this does feel like plastic, so maybe we can cut it here and here. Do some kind of mend. Because like I said, this thing snakes around. By the time it ends, you're going to be frustrated as hell. Because uh, even even here goes it back into here. I don't know what kind of nipple it is. Not friendly. Yeah, it's it's looking pretty good. So that's that's the culprit. Let's see if we can fix this real quick. In case anybody's interested, this is uh, this pressurizer is called Mighty Vac Cooling System Test Kit Model MV4560. So that's corrugated, kind of like plastic. It's not rubber. Just trying to think the best way to do this. Um, because if we can mend that with um, like just a nipple, you know, going in to each, <clears throat> like, a, like you would mend a garden hose or something, um, that's probably be the best option. I don't know if this material is that kind of material where you can do that. I'm going to try it anyways, but um, my problem is, you know, where this coolant level is, if we clip that, how much is going to pee out, you know, and where it's coming from, both sides, it's kind of high. Uh, i got to get a bucket nonetheless. Let me think about this. Maybe we can get the hose up here, but it's, if it's leaking there, cracked or whatever, 
then this thing's probably brittle anyways. Um, let me look up to see how much this thing is first of all. Alright, so I looked it up on Rock Auto, got the part number, and this is uh, Amazon. This fits your Ford Focus. This is an expensive piece, but that looks metal, does it not? That does look metal. I'm sure it is metal, including T, but this thing is wicked expensive. It's like a hundred something dollars. Um, so, let's see, heater jumper, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so it is metal. That is plastic. I don't have uh, anything plastic as far as uh, got this doohickey here, right? But that's the wrong size. This is too big. This might be the size, but I'm thinking of doing something like this, you know, just marrying up. Ugh. No, she was cutting. I don't definitely need a hose now. Yeah, I can't get in there. I don't want to disconnect it from either end. Um, maybe a saw. Maybe a hand saw. <laughs> I don't know. If I could get in there easily with a tool just to crip even a pair of pliers, dikes or something. I just don't want to put a lot of torque, you know. Uh, jeez, let me think about this. I don't know how else to get in there without taking shit apart, which I didn't want to do. I just want to see if I can mend it from here. Even that would be uh, kind of problematic. Probably not. Yep, I'm a little bit out of focus here. If I can cut it over here, I could probably mend that a little better. Yeah, I think we can get it, get it cut here. Let's try this. Watch this thing be steel. Underneath, <laughs> underneath the uh, what I think is plastic. This might not work either. One of these days, one of these days, I'm gonna get a light that works, or a light, or a garage, or something. Yeah, the problem is I hate these little damn engines. The problem is you can't get anything. radiator hose <laughs> so this uh, radiator hose just snapped off and it appears to be again I hate these little cars see how one thing leads to another it just snapped off of there that looks like it's replaceable all right, all right so we're starting off pretty good I'm trying to get this hose clipped and everything I got is in the way. Lights are in the way. Um, I guess I'm just going to have to work on this and show you what I did later. Can't show you what I'm doing. Because uh, I already broke broke this thing. Just from a little bit of torque. Again, this is a 2008. So not like it's brand new, but I don't think that should have broke that easy. Uh, okay, so there's a reason I hate these little cars. Um, so, because you need to do a simple hose, right? But you need to take off basically you know everything the heart the lungs so this is the computer i unhooked all the wires there and they're just kind of dangling everywhere i got them tucked out of the way uh this little connector here for the air box to get some access to this upper hose which was a casualty we broke the neck there i'll let him decide whether he wants to pay me for that i'll eat that but we got to figure out how that comes off um, i think it's just a pin or something anyways uh, so disconnecting stuff. I can't even tell you what half this stuff goes to. You know, I've got wires tucked around everywhere <laughs> uh, the, the, the three computer wires they should only plug in one way. I ain't worried about that um, Where's the other one? There's a third one somewhere. There's one two Oh right there three so I think that's the bottom one or the middle. This might be the bottom I think this is the bottom doesn't matter either way. We got them out of the way. Well, Kind of. They're kind of still in the way. So this this was the, like I said, the casualty when we got that off. And it didn't really come off. Uh, so the OEM clamp is, you know, that spring type. I ended up having to cut that because uh, it was such, it was like welded on. So I thought the back side of that was going to be the same thing right here for this hose. And I was able to get a screwdriver in there and uh, we got that peeled off of there. And the OEM clamp is still there. Probably won't use that though. It's a little rusty. Uh, so then... We can get to the culprit, but that is literally this hose here, which you probably can't see, which is also, there's a better look there, on this T, 
which, uh, let's see here, can we see that? This T, if we saw in the uh, Rock Auto or Amazon, with T. Now, possibly, you can get it without the T. I don't know, I didn't look that up. Getting it without the T is the part we need, actually. But getting in here, trying to mend that, you still have to go through this process and trying to get it off of here. We're just going to get the whole damn thing, is basically what I'm saying. And it's only like, uh, what, eight inches longer with the T. Plus this is brittle. And who knows is that, if that's going to come off. Uh, so, we ain't out of the woods yet. And I don't know how many... It doesn't appear that it's connected anywhere else. Uh, and we didn't look at this side yet, <laughs> which might be another problem. It appears that it's uh, just inside there. Hopefully we can get to that without taking off like uh, perhaps the intake manifold. <laughs> this is just ridiculous. I hate these little cars. That's where I'm at, just catching you up. So we haven't got it out yet, uh, but we're closing in. I think I think it's doable. So we're got about uh, 35, 40 minutes into this. Just just on, on doing unnecessary stuff for a, a stinking heater hose. <laughs> All right. So that's what that booger looks like. And uh, it is, let me get out in the light a little bit. It is not repairable, like I thought it originally might be. Um, so this is that kind of stuff, that rigid plastic where it gets formed around the nipple. So it's all plastic, and I think we tried to cut it. Uh, not sure we tried to cut it, but here's where the leak was. And of course I cracked it uh, wide open here, but um, that, that, that's what the problem is. And it's, pl it's plastic. You can't really mend this. So I don't think it's mendable. I think it's junk, but here's the other problem. Uh, it appears to be the $100 one from either Rock Auto or uh, Amazon is metal. And I gotta tell you, where this guy lives, the even amount of stuff that we removed, it didn't come out very friendly because there's other harnesses that had, you know, snakes through. So, and, and at this point, uh, how I got it out of there, just so, by the way, I cut this, that's the T, that's the T right, uh, try to point to it, right there. So that's rubber. We're just going to go rubber. We're just going to go rubber like a normal goddamn heater hose and uh, mend it that way. So this is, uh, again, I'm not going to buy a $100 pipe and uh, hopefully it, you know, because it's formed, metal. There's no way it's going to go in there. This was problematic getting it out. So this we're going to save. I'll, I'll uh, slice into that. Save this junction here this T and we'll go rubber to rubber and you know rubber to rubber which the other end of that is uh, over here which you can see it I can point to it with the light this this is another plastic nipple that comes out of there that is attached to a rubber I don't know if you can see that I don't know what I'm pointing at a rubber clamp which you can't really get to but we can get to that nipple and we can definitely uh, go rubber, 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 rubber everywhere. Uh, but this is why I don't like working on these things. I know I sound like I'm complaining, but I told a fella. I, I don't know, man. <laughs> I should have stuck to my guns. Anyways, we'll, we're, let's go get some parts. This is just, of course, in the future if I get this problem. So we're going to use these, uh, these clamps over a slit when I'm here. But it's just a regular plastic barb. And this one is uh, still a barb, but not like the triple barb. Um, so we gotta get, we're going to save this tea because we're going to need that. And I'm sure you can get this tea um, if yours broke or something. The good news is this stuff is easy to cut. Just do a little split there. It becomes brittle over time, so I'm wondering, you know, cutting into this, whether it was going to, um, I'll clean that up. But So the point is, when we were under there at first, trying to get this uh, cut, was the issue because we didn't have the room or the space. So, obviously we're not just going to shove this in here, right, and then have it, uh, this is just a piece I had, and I think this is 5 eighths, and this measured 5 eighths, so this should work. So I'm thinking from the heat gun, if we had a, um, I'm going to plug this in, if we had a way to cut that without the, you know, if we, we were able to get in there and cut that, I think this would have worked.
Yeah, so I know that would have worked. I can see it's bulging right here. Let me let that cool and then we'll try to pull it off out of the vise. Um, and if, I, I would have just went to the store and got this set, the exact piece. This is just three quarters to five eighths, but we went five eighths to five eighths with a piece like this. Really no tools except for a hair dryer or a heat gun necessary if we could have made that, that cut, but we couldn't do it. Well, I couldn't do it just because of where it was located in between the radiator and the, you know, you had about this much stuff. I guess if you took some kind of cutting saw, like a hacksaw maybe, uh, just a single blade hacksaw, maybe that would have been enough room and I'm sure it would have cut through plastic easily. Um, I'm just, you know, throwing it out there. If you're, you know, in a pickle, you could, we could have probably just got away with this, um, still a little warm, but there's no way that's coming out. That is locked in there solid. Yeah, so we're just going to work backwards where I was, but that heater hose that's coming off your, uh, the heater core area, you know, it was one of these clamps. I didn't need to take this off, but it's kind of rusty. Uh, they do crack and break. Uh, I, I'm not going to reuse this just because of the location. I don't want this car back from, from a leak from that. So I'm just going to put a stainless regular, um, you know, worm gear type on there. So this uh, heater hose, I don't know if you see that in here. And grab it, pull it up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. that that's just the uh, the plastic 5 8 to 5 8 deal. So I'm just going to put a clamp on the back side of that where, the, where I took the, uh, the other one off. Then we're going to add a, a heater hose, snake it under under this, uh, probably never look at the same thing here, snake it under this uh, junction tube where the upper radiator hose goes in, and this hose here gets plugged back into. And there's another clamp that I did have to take that one off, but I'm going to reuse that. That one seems to be easier to get to. It's right here if it does fail. Um, but this one. So I'm going to go ahead and off camera get this clamp on there and get the hose started. And we'll run it that way. And we won't cut it until we need to, to get the T. Um, or maybe I'll set it up before because it's going to be hard. The T is right here. Right. So I might set that up. I might cut a length, set it up with a T. <clears throat> so when I'm snaking it under there, we don't have to work in there. We'll just shove it up and do that. Let me do that. Let me put it together and show you what I got. Ah, at least then we have a problem already. So I was just setting this up. So this goes um, to the heater core, right, this end. And we'll clamp it on that hose you saw inside there. And this goes to the T. Um, and that came down. This is the way it was set up. These are the, the way it was, uh, you know, off of a, uh, uh, I think it's 5 sixteenths or whatever it was. Had an OEM clamp. You know, I just mangled these because I wasn't going to use them. And it was about this long, right? So when I'm at Old Napa getting some heater hose, I asked them to give me a little section of hose, which is uh, this section, wrong size. It is the right size. He gave me the right size because I'm standing there with the parts with him. And this will fit on there, and we can clamp that, right? However, on the car, where this tees off to going up, it's only a 5 sixteenths metal nipple. So I was looking at this hose, and I'm like, how does that work? It's about 5 sixteenths on this end, right? Look at this end. It's whatever this diameter is, right? Quarter inch or whatever, half inch, three inch, whatever it is. But it's one hose. It wasn't like pieced together. So now I'm thinking, is this a, a formed hose? You know what I mean? Like uh, it's bigger on one end than the other? Or did they just stretch it across there, right? So I have this, uh, I have a little piece of this uh, fuel line hose, which will work so even, even better. Ain't no way it's going on there, but it will slip on the other one. So I'm just going to try to heat this up, see if this, uh, see if I can get this pliable enough to stretch right around there. Right? Otherwise, we're going to have to, and there's about this much room in there, we're going to have to do a dual, you know, come off here with a big one, reduce it with a nipple, you know, whatever this is, 3 eighths to 5 sixteenths or whatever the, the thing is. But then it's going to be kind of tight because we only have this much room. But let me try this first. I don't know if it's going to work. I never try to stretch regular um again with the power regular heater hose but or, you know this is fuel line hose but same thing actually let me try it with a, a piece of well let me see let me plug this in and see what happens problem is i can't touch this after i gotta get some gloves it's too hot ow that is way too hot Woohoo! let me get some gloves I think it's going on. I gotta keep keep at it. Yeah, I think that's gonna work. It's uh it's definitely stretched on there. And uh, it doesn't appear there's no splitting, cracking, or 
anything that appears to be uh, going to be compromised. So I think I'm just going to go with that. I just kept heating it up a little bit and twisting it on. Even though it's not a threaded thing, I just kept twisting went the same direction and it kind of just formed a little hole over it. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go with that. We're above the, uh, you know, where the thing is. And looking at the old one, it's about what they did. I mean, it's stretched out here. I can see, you can see right through where, uh, you know, it gets thinner on the end, you know, on this end. Huh. So I don't know how they did that, or if this is a special hose. But we just made our own, right? Let me tighten this up. I got to clip it off here somewhere. Wow. Well, that was a lot of, a lot of over this, under that, across through here. <laughs> uh, so I was able to get the, uh, you could probably see it there, the two worm gears, right? That's the plastic nipple, that's the original hose back there, heater hose, comes there. And then like I said, you got to figure out how this thing snakes through there. You can't even see it, for Christ's sakes. But anyways, here's the, uh, the other end of it, right, S sneaking out. And then uh, coming up that tube, that 5 16 fuel line. Uh, I haven't put that, I haven't secured that, um, you know, uh, worm gear yet, or the, the clamp. But you can barely get your hands in here. See, this is just got to be... Uh-oh, I should have spun it around the other way. This is, um, you know, got to be clamped here, and that'll be that. And then the other end of this, I don't know if you can see that, because we've got the world's best lighting. Um, another piece of hose has to go on that nipple, and I think i got enough room to get my hands in there, because if you try this with everything put together, it's going to be wicked tight. Because this was, I know it doesn't look that bad from here. You know, what do you do? Just put it under there. Now, it's kind of a squeeze deal. And again, the routing... You got to go over one harness, in between another one, under this one, over that one, like I said. So we just got to come around the front side here. This should be fairly easy. Uh, and then we'll find a place to secure it, you know, along somewhere before we, you know, we'll let it go down the road dangling because I don't want it to flap in the wind. We'll find something along the harness there. Or, you know, we'll find something. So before I forget the uh, the new hose, I just put this hose on, on the, uh, you know, this plastic connection here but this piece don't forget this piece that the new hose we just put in in this original holes they just kind of get stacked on top of each other so I'll put that in next they just open up and that way they'll be right underneath each other where they're supposed to be because it's flexible you know it's a little curved to the side but <clears throat> we'll straighten that out and then uh, then we'll move to the front here I'm not gonna hook up the computers yet just because I, I just want to make sure we get the rest of this uh, hooked up before we hook everything back up. All right, so we're done with the pipe. Uh, it's stacked on top of the other one. You can see the clamps there. And it runs along, and it's got our T, you know, in there, remember? And then I got it snuck along. You probably can't see under there. Snuck along the front here. And I just got it temporarily uh, zip-tied uh, to the, um, one of them's on the, the dipstick tube, and the other's on some like some kind of sensor bracket, but I got to get some proper zip ties to get this. I mean, it's clear right now, and the other one was just dangling too. The original OEM one was just dangling in the wind, um, although it was more rigid. I'll find a place, a better place to secure this, even though it's not touching. You just don't want anything touching, I would imagine. So, anywho, <clears throat> I think this is going to work fine. It's definitely, uh, I mean, this is a 2008. It's got 160,000 miles on it. That, that repair there will probably last out, outlast the car, but we'll do the radiator hose up a radiator hose because it it needs to sneak under the uh, the housing and everything else oh so that's next all right so this is our casualty uh, the one we broke um, so I'm going to use the original the original clamp here and uh, this this is one of those deals where it's just a, a, a pick you just pick out this uh, kind of like a spring spring loaded deal all right it goes for the bottom so I'm going to plug this in uh, this will sit like this in the car. Where are we? And it just snap rings. Uh, so we got the uh, OEM clamp there. And we got that pin finally in there. I'm beginning to hate this car, actually. I mean, there's little to no room to get your hands in there, to get your get that clip in there. Air box is in a way. I don't really want to remove it. It looks like a, a ro royal pain in the hoo-hoo. Anyways, we got it in. Uh, next uh, we can do the computer I guess plug in all our uh, miscellaneous stuff we took out like this probably pops into is that a hole there probably pops into that hole right yeah I think 
I gotta get a better light. I definitely gotta get a better light. I go get a light. I think it plugs in there. And this plugs into, I believe, on the corner there. Right? So we'll just go ahead and plug all these things back in. Plug all the connectors in. And just, uh, you know, keep, keep going in a backwards formation. And I'm assuming that you can't really goof these up as far as, um, let's hope they're not all the same. Yeah, that one looks wider. Definitely wider. It's got different uh, thingamajiggers on it. We gotta get all this stuff on top. That probably goes on the top. Oh, possibly the bottom. Maybe the middle. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Let me uh, let me unwind all this stuff and figure out where it goes and start plugging stuff in. Yeah. So we got all our little Christmas tree holders plugged into their plugged into their holders. I got uh, all kinds of stuff. Just uh, you know, it forms right back. This is the last piece. And boom. Don't know where this plugs in. Don't know where this plugs in yet, but let's do this piece. We're going to be careful of this because this is the same plastic garbage that was on the um, the other thing. The uh, fuel line. So I think this goes in here. And uh, again, we don't want to put too much torque on it because that is obviously going to break. Just like the other guy. Right? So that goes somewhere like that, right? And get to everything. It's just a blank hole. Let's see, that comes up. Where does this do hickey go? Got one little one little child left. Maybe let's see here. Where do you belong, mister? I know the battery goes on. That clips on that. That's a post for the battery. Just got this one little plug hanging out. Hey man, where do I belong? That's, that's all air. Where would an electric electric piece be close by? Oh, there it is. Huh! It's down below. He's not supposed to be upstairs here. He's supposed to be down below. And uh Probably should have hooked him up before the computer. So now we're gonna have to snake him back down where he belongs. Probably should have paid attention to that prior. Okay, it goes around. That's what I mean, man. This is just garbage. Just terrible. Remind me not to work on a Ford again. All right, let me work on uh, getting that sucker plugged in. And that's that. One last plug. Put the battery in, and uh, we do have to get zip ties still. I want I want thicker, thicker, wider zip ties to keep this hose more secure. And we'll start this up and put some fluid in it and see if uh, see if that leaks. Hey. Okay, that's better. Now we got some heat. Uh, so at first uh, we started uh, burping a thing on flat ground there. And then uh, started it up. I thought everything was topped off. No heat. Upper radiator hose had some heat to it, as well as the one leading to the uh, the heater core. But the bottom, the one we replaced, didn't. You know, this this fella there didn't. So I was like, oh boy, thermostat wasn't open. I'm thinking, okay. So all it took is uh, throwing it up uh, on some ramps, jacking it up a little bit, and then she, you know, was an additional burping going on, and uh, we filled it up. And I don't know if this, I've been running for about like 30 minutes looking for leaks. I think we're all set. I mean, uh, everything's topped off. I'll run it for a little bit more, look for some leaks, but I think uh, I think we got it licked. So that's, that being said, we got, uh, you know, an easy, it, it, I mean, technically it would be an easy fix, but it was just such a, you know, taking all this crap out just to route that hose was a problem. I mean, I guess technically you could just went right over the top, right? Who cares? Um, but because we had the casualty, uh, the, the thing, to what I was getting at, is doing it this way. I wanted to originally splice that together, you know, just with a, a, a nipple, half inch, half inch nipple. That would have been golden. You know, we could have heated it up, but there's no room to get in here, so we couldn't do that. And you can't lift that stuff up, you know, to get ends out, because it's so brittle, it, it just breaks. So, um, we ended up doing it this way because the new pipe is steel, or, you know, metal. I don't know if it's steel, but it's metal for sure. I doubt it's aluminum, but... Um, the point is, 
even with rubber flexible hose to get in here it was kind of a chore you know fitting it in going through here so good luck with taking that piece and and you know a formed piece even a plastic stuff because getting it out was was kind of tricky. so you'd have to get rid of a lot more stuff this whole air box would come out instead of just this piece um, you would probably have to get rid of this uh, the computer may even have to come out and all the wiring you need to get like full access so this thing would you know slip around and do where it's supposed to be routing battery tray might have had to come out you know just way more stuff involved so we ended up doing this way like I said this is a 2008 this car's got 160 170 thousand miles on it this is gonna work just fine I still uh, need to get some thicker um, straps there some zip ties but I think this is gonna be just fine anyways that's uh, that's the fix for today so thanks for watching we'll see you next time